Okay, now I've tried to draw everything that we need to know about the um, the problem up here in this corner. Um, so we've got a charge. We've got our we've got our charge up here. That's R plus D above um, the origin. Then around the origin with a radius R, we have a grounded conducting sphere. So that should be enough um, information for the rest of the problem. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go through, and hopefully this will only take up one sheet. Um, the first thing will only take up one sheet, and that is to go ahead and just find the um, position for the image charge. Okay. Um, so, and hopefully it will only take one video. Hopefully it will be less than 20 minutes. I'm not sure. Um, so we have to come over here and we've got some steps from our strategy that we said we were going to do. Um, the first thing is I think we said we would place our image charge, uh, place a general image charge. Okay, and we'll leave a lot of room at the edge here. So this will be um, the line. Uh, so we'll use that line um, to put our answer over here. Uh, so here's our work, and our work here, we're just placing our image charge, so we need a third um, point. So uh, that'll be an x2 is equal to um, z prime z hat with a, uh, with what? Where should I put it? With uh, Q prime as its charge, okay. So, so that, so that's it. Now, remember x one, the position of Q was equal to d plus r. We just said that again, and this thing is just some point around r. We'll we'll use that as we need it. So now, now that we've got that, we can go ahead and we can start trying to solve for these things. Now, the condition that we use, right? The condition that we use is um, the potential of um, the potential at R is equal to zero if you have a grounded sphere. Okay, so using that condition, using this physical um, this physical condition here, uh, that's how we're going to find Z prime and Q prime. But that means we have to find um, our potential. So we're going to have to find um, potentials from each charge, from each charge, both the um, real and the imaginary. So for our real charge, um, and the point charges, how, what's the easiest way to do this? What's the easiest way to do this with a, uh, with a small number of point charges? Yeah, yeah, it's really the easiest is just to use a Coulomb potential, right? Just uh, write out the Coulomb potential um, for each one of these. So um phi one um at some point um x y z right or we could have just used x or something like that um is the charge over four pi epsilon naught uh times one over the distance between here and whatever point in space so here and here let's say so that distance is going to be um since this is on the z-axis, it doesn't have any x or y components, so it's just x squared plus y squared plus the difference between here and wherever it is along here that you are. So z, um, which is some point on this sphere, minus um, d plus r, which is up here. Okay, And possibly that would have been a, would have been a better idea to use... Um, Possibly we should have. I should have switched those around, but it's not really a major issue. So, so that's that's for my real charge. So for my image, I have something similar going on, right? So I have my phi two of x y z. These are the same points x y z. Uh, I have my q prime over four pi epsilon naught, right? That's sort of the same thing. Um, still, I've also said it's also on the z-axis, just by symmetry it has to be on the z-axis. So we have x squared plus y squared 
plus z minus z prime squared. And I was intending to talk a little bit about the symmetry here, but obviously this, if we have just one charge, it can't be off to the side here because then if this point is zero, then that point isn't zero, right? So, um, because it's asymmetric, right? So um, we're not, we need to have um, this image charge be somewhere in here. All right, and it could be up here, it could be down here right now, it could be at the center. We don't know right now. We'll find that out in just a moment. All right, so then we want to choose two points on the sphere um, for VR to equal zero, right? And, you know, there are a lot of points on this sphere. There are an infinite number of points on, on this sphere. Um, on the surface of this sphere, could be over here, could be over here, could be over here. Um, but what's really the easiest is just to get rid of these um, kind of silly x squareds and y squareds, right? We don't need them, right? Uh, because we can get one point here and one point here, and that will give us um, two equations and two unknowns. We'll be okay with that, right? Excellent. That's exactly what we want. So, um, we're going to choose two points. And like I said, those two, two points are going to be um, xA is equal to big R z hat and xB is equal to um, minus big R z hat. So, and why am I using a big R, the radius, the radius of this sphere? Well, I'm going to switch to spherical coordinates. Not for this part, I think. Um, but I think I'll wait until I'm actually trying to find the charge distribution. Um, so, so here it's easiest to use, um, to use the Cartesian coordinate system because it shows us an easy way to get rid of some, some nasty nastiness. And later on, we'll be able to get rid of more nastiness by switching to the um, spherical coordinate system. Uh, then we need to find the total potential with superposition for each point. All right, so that's just superposition. So at point A, so which is right here, that's our first point. Um, what, what do we have? We have um, 0, 0, 0, 0, a big R here, and we have a big R here. So let's see. Phi um, is equal to phi 1 plus phi 2. So let's be nice and write that out for you. Uh, then we have Q over 4 pi epsilon naught here, right? And then we have 1 over the square root of this squared, which is z minus d plus r. This is r, so r minus r is zero, so this is just d squared. So at this point, or d squared, and then we take the square root of the d squared. So at this point, we just have q, q over four pi epsilon naught d, right? That's, that's all we need there. Uh, this next point is q pi prime over four pi epsilon naught. In this case, we don't have anything canceling. We have r mi big R minus um, z prime. So we just have um, r minus z prime squared, I believe. Um, let's see, r minus z prime. Right, and then we take the square root again. So we're okay with that. So that's actually phi a. So point b, um, we have phi b is equal to phi 1 plus phi 2, except now we have minus, minus r here. So instead of, um, instead of d sitting down here, we have d plus r, d plus 2r, right? So the distance is d plus r plus r, d plus 2r, plus q prime over 4 pi epsilon naught. And now, in, now we have minus r minus z prime, which is squared, and then we take the square root, so that's just the absolute value of that, which is r plus z prime, okay? Everything's fine. And actually, this is the absolute value of um, the previous thing, but obviously this, this is positive, this is positive, this is positive. We don't have to worry about whether or not where the absolute value sign comes from. Um, so 
because this z prime is somewhere in here. So it's somewhere inside the sphere, so r has to be larger than z prime. Um, so we're fine with that. Um, now we need to simplify. Uh, oh, well, actually, first we have to remember to set these equal to zero, and then we can simplify. Um, and we simplify basically by cross-multiplying, canceling things out, all, the, all that other fun stuff that you always love to do. So we'll simplify both equations. Okay, and after we simplify both equations, then we'll be able to try to um, try to find q prime and um, z prime. So actually, we could do it straight away, but let's let's just simplify because that's that's the best thing. So um, these four pi epsilon knots, for example, they cancel. So since they cancel, we don't have to worry about it. I mean, well, they're common, so they go here in the zero. We don't have to worry about it. Um, now I want to get everything else in the numerator, because it's easy to manipulate the numerator. So we have q times r minus z prime plus um, q prime times d equal to zero. Now, if I, want, if I had wanted to, I could have put them on different sides. I don't really think that's going to save us anything. And we do the same thing for point B. So we have Q times R plus Z prime plus Q prime times D plus 2R. That's equal to zero. Okay. So those are the equations that we're going to use here. Got plenty of room down here to do, do more work. Plenty of time um, before making the, you know, the, um, concatenation software will fail, so we're doing okay. So we've got six. All right, well, uh -oh, we have to do some sort of solution, so we want to solve things. Um, there are two things I'm going to do. First, I'm going to A, sum them, and then solve for, I'm going to sum these two equations and then solve for Q prime. So you see the Z prime, if I add, if I add these two equations, right, plus z and minus z, the z prime goes away. So there were lots of ways I could do this. This is always the easiest way in my in my brain. It's just to add um, a plus b. And after I've done that, I sum them and I figure out what q prime is, I uh, substitute uh, q prime. Substitute. Okay, and I want to put that back into A. Right, so I'll do those two things now. Um, so I add these together, that means I have 2QR plus 0 plus 2Q prime D plus 2D plus R. So D plus R is um, the distance from the origin to Q. So th this is looking pretty nice, right? This is this is nice and simple. Um, the twos are going to cancel. We solve for Q prime by dividing by uh, this is equal to zero. So we pull this over here, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, this is just a lot of really simple algebra because um, this goes on the other side. There's a negative sign. Um, we've got an R over uh, D plus R. So we've got something that's smaller than um, the original charge, right, and negative. So it's flipping its sign, which it makes sense because we're trying to cancel something. That's exactly what happened with the plane that we do in class. And um, it's smaller. Um, I, I don't know that that's something that necessarily makes sense, um, but it will make sense in conjunction with, um, with this, right? Uh, I, I guess we could say very easily that, you know, it's inside of the sphere, so if ins inside of this, one's inside of the sphere and one can be anywhere, uh, probably this other one's going to be smaller than the first one, going to be smaller than the first one because it's going to be closer, right, in general. I mean, there's, well, actually, it's always going to be closer. Um, but in general, it would have to be closer because, I mean, if you went farther than R away, it couldn't, you know, and the other thing had to be in the sphere. You got it all figured out, right? So... Now we're ready to go with this um, second one, so we take this and we just put it in here. 
Uh, this is always really, really complicated. So we have um, QR minus QZ prime um, plus, oh no, excuse me, it's another minus sign, minus um, R times D plus R over D plus R times Q equals zero. Um, I guess the first thing is, is all the Qs cancel out. Uh, we bring the Z prime over to the other side, right? So it's um, positive. And then we have um, R minus R over D plus R. Um, I'm missing something. Oh, there should have been a D here, right? So I forgot that D. It was R D. Okay, so we can pull out the um, R, and then we have um, D plus R, D plus R minus D, which is just R times Q. Or no, there is no Q. Excuse me. So we have have that thing. Um, I don't really have enough space but you know we just multiply this in here and square it and we're fine right so actually i guess we do have enough space because that's all i want to do on this page right i said i want after i got done with this page i wanted to um i wanted to go uh, go ahead and put a new page in because we have a little bit of math left after this so let's see if i can get in here so so we said our new spot was somewhere in here um, it's a positive number. It's R over D plus R, right? So that's D plus R is larger than R. So it's something R scaled down. So it's somewhere in here. It's positive like that. And then it has a negative charge associated with it. So uh, that's where our image charge is. And that's where we're going to start our next part of this problem, the final part of this problem, the part of the problem that you've been waiting for, where we find the charge distribution of or on the the um, on the on the sphere. So this solid sphere is going to have a um, surface charge distribution induced by this original charge Q. I can see how see how you're on your on the edge of your seat right now. I know that this is what you really you really 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 want to see, and you will see in just a moment.